Fan Mu Alpha League of Legends Championship Series! No hype. March Madness Edition. March Madness Edition. I am your streaming host and play-by-play -play caster, Nate Fudgy Ditters I'm. And with me casting is Michael Opi Opich, I think. That's how you say your name. <laughs> Opie. Just, Opie. Just, just call me Opie. I went with the full name. I went with the full name. And we will be drafting here in a short minute. So enjoy the short hiatus. Yeah, we've got Butt Johnson's tuna flavored ice cream showdown versus Universe 6 today. There are a couple subs. Uh, we'll go over it as you know we get some viewers going. Um, but we've got Ult Instinct Goku subbing in in the support role for Zorpox. Uh, Panic at the top hat is subbing in for this is Lugo in the top lane. And then there's been some just role swaps as well here. Um, Gert moved from support to the jungle. Menbung moved from the jungle to the mid lane, and then Juice Me Ashen moved from the mid lane to the support role, keeping Jabberman Kurtz in his AD carry. So we'll see if these uh, changes help their team. I'm wondering if it's just because they've got a, a different person in the top lane, or if it's just like an overall switch. We'll find out. We will. It looks like we're getting draft underway shortly. There's some issue with the draft select board, so we made a copy and are distributing that link currently. So hopefully uh, everyone will be on the same draft select board this game. But we'll, uh, we'll continue to wait for our players to figure out exactly what's going on as we, uh, as we move along here. So for this game, I'm kind of surprised to see Menbung uh, actually take over in the mid lane. Uh, I haven't seen that before. I don't think. <laughs> have you Have you ever seen uh, Menbung uh, choose to play mid? Um, I don't believe I've seen it in any sort of tournament format. And I honestly, most of the time, whenever you know you play with with Menbung, he tends to be in the jungle. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't see him in the mid lane very often, but I think that is a, uh, you know, a secondary role for him. So we'll see how the adjust works out. I know Gert has been trying to work on his jungle lately, has started to kind of like the jungle more. So obviously I think they have something up their sleeve. Menbung's the kind of person to always have some sort of plan ready, so... I'm assuming we're going to see some sort of strategy here today. A, a good reasoning for them to actually switch uh, and try and make the change here. Yeah, I think... Juice Miyashin, though, is always a good support, so... It could be a good reason, but if I'm not mistaken, these teams have no playoff contention. If I'm, I, I could be wrong, but uh, it might be a strategy or it might be a meme fest. So we that could be as well. Yet um, to determine. Uh, I'm sure we'll see by the picks. Well, I think... I think Universe 6 might be out. If I... Because I, I think they're, what, 0-4 in loss? Or in their... But, but Johnson's tuna-flavored ice cream showdown is 1-3. So... They can do it, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's correct. I believe so. So the first band coming out here is the Volley Bear band. Uh, it's been a bit of a terror in solo queue, um, and we've seen it kind of all over the place, uh, smashing people. So I'm glad to see maybe a Volley Bear getting taken out, uh, because he was at least so beefer for one patch or so. And then Fiora banned away from Front Lash. That's a standard one. Very standard. Uh, pretty good. Let's see. Fiora oh. is one of Front Lash's better picks. And we've seen in past matches 
the Fiora doing really well. Absolutely. Let's see. I just made a Facebook post there for everybody to see. But yeah, the Fiora, a very standard band, lots of true damage, you know, it's very hard to itemize against. Really, really good uh, pick for Front Lash, so not surprised to see that taken away here. And the band two is Kaisa. Uh, we've seen Menbutton play that quite a bit. What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, Kaisa is <laughs> really, really strong right now. Um, you know, C Van's a very big proponent of it in the mid lane, um, especially if you build kind of the hybrid. That hybrid build, I think, is the best way to do it. I know some people like to do crit, but in the mid lane, I think that's really good mixed damage, uh, and it can take over a game. Absolutely, so. I think it's one of the most snowballing champions in the game. Speaking of uh, snowy champions, we have Sejuani being banned as the yep. se secondary ban for. Uh, Universe Six. Um, taken, taken from Detective Cone, mm -hmm. one of the the more well known Sejuani players in the LCS has been. I mean, as of recently, I think has been trying to work more away from it, more towards the damagey side, but still always in the back pocket. Always a really good, strong ban. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Zyra being the third ban for BDS, looks like that's targeted at Juice Miyashin. I, I would assume. Uh, Zyra, yeah. I haven't seen too much of it in this uh, March Madness, but I've, it's a very strong pick, does a lot of poke damage, so that could be uh, one of those worrying factors for uh, BJS, so taking that away is fair. And then the Poppy ban from Universe 6. Yep, another one away from Front Lash. Mm, what, did the, then... what did the EU LCS say today? Two words, I believe it was, uh, about eight letters, and I think it was Ban Swain. Yeah, Swain is insanely strong. I'm assuming that's probably going to Front Lash as well. Or it might go to Bison. It's, I mean, it's a flex pick, but I would think it's going to Front Lash in the top lane. Um, we'll have to see, but we're going to get a Caitlyn pick over for Jabberman Kurtz. Seeing a lot more, uh, especially in like actual LCS and whatnot, a lot more Caitlyn's being picked up. Um, just very strong early, insanely strong mid game as well, uh, and especially with objectives, just being able to put that trap line down, lots of zoning potential as well. Yeah, Plus, she... the range can keep herself safe. She's definitely one of the most effective champions in a siege, uh, and doing that into a Swain, trying to keep him at the range uh, so you can dodge out of his CC, etc., is definitely something ideal. And then you see the orb picked up. From Universe 60, Orn is just one of those picks that it's it's so tough to deal with. Um, uh, Ram coming down from the lane, uh, and even even in lane, uh, Orn's just super strong. So most likely a pick for Panic at the top hat as the substitute. Uh, I don't know. I I think the Orn. We could also see Orn it in is the, definitely in a pick Gert. for Gert. We could yeah. see it for Gert. This is true. Uh, Twitch but it picked could, up. You know. Twitch picked up from BJS, another hyper carry. Uh, really good if you can get those good flanks off and uh, take out their squishies. Uh, definitely going to be kind of tough to avoid the CC from Orin, though, I think, with Twitch. Uh, and so they're going to shore that up a little bit with the Alistar, trying to be the ones on the engage and be the ones starting those fights on their terms and keeping that Orin uh, away from the second half of his ultimate. And then Universe yeah, 6, picking up that Lulu. Alistar in general, super strong champion. Um, I, I say it's strong with Twitch, but it's really strong with like any champion, to be honest, that has a a good burst potential, which Twitch does, especially if you can get, you know, you go with a... Uh, press the attack, and then you get that burst damage from the, the poison. So, and with an Alistar knockup and everything, it gives them time to actually hit all of that damage, so... Uh, but the Lulu's a good counter engage to that because um, you can, you know, polymorph. You've got the shields, you've got some poke. Great pick into Alistar, I yeah, think. It looks like UBI's bot lane's, UBI's bot lane's gonna just plan on poking them out while BGS is probably going to try and get some engage going uh, and do some damage. So uh, we see a Warwick ban from UBI and a Kled ban from BJS. Uh, I think Warwick's a pretty standard jungle ban right now. Uh, Shivana following that uh, pretty shortly. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Warwick and Shyvana, very strong jungles. Uh, they do a lot of damage and they kind of lay a hard carry, so I'm not surprised to see those taken away uh, from Detective Cone, uh, who's been known to do very well uh, on both tank and carry junglers, so kind of take away that carry potential when they already have so much in that Swain and Twitch. Yeah, you've, you've got the Sejuani band away, who's very good at, at putting on pressure in those lanes, and then you've, they band away Warwick and Shyvana, who are both very good at objective-based, uh, like, sort of objective-based games, which I think Detective Cone does really well at, um, trying to make sure he's around Dragon and uh, Rift Herald and everything, trying to get those early advantages for him, so... Um, plus Warwick and Shyvana have really good engages there, do a ton of damage, so it re really helps out, round that out, fan line, so. There's that Malzahar ban, ban 5. Trying to get them away from being able to pick maybe their Twitch, but is uh, not exactly strong in the Swain. I feel like Swain has a lot of uh, play into that, or at least somewhat. Um, so kind of surprised to see that Malzahar ban away. Yeah, I'm interested to see here, because... Okay, so we see the Scion pick. Scion? Is that...? Yep, that's the <laughs> it's the Scion. Let's yeah, see it. Everyone started flinging their poop around in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> We're all monkeys here. Scion and Orn are in the same game on the same team, in fact. Incredible stuff. Once again, the classic. The classic Scion. Let's see it. Brought to you by Big Anime Titties. Let's see if they can get that going. You've only got one member of Big Anime Titties back on this team, and that's Gert. <laughs> so let's see what can be done. But Gert is the Orn. Gert, Gert plays Orn so much, so well, a lot of the time. So let's let's see how that works out here, because now now you're almost guaranteed that Gert's going to take the Orn. I'm assuming that Scion's probably going to be in the top lane. Um, so let's see, because I, I'm st it still could be Swain mid or top at this point. Well, actually no, because if there's an Ezreal. Ezreal, so it looks like a Twitch in the jungle. They actually debated him into two jungle oh, bands. Oh boy. So BJS baby coming out strong oh. in the uh, champ select here. Go for some serious damage from we both. We could see the jungles. Ezreal mid lane too. It could be. It could be a triple ADC comp, which would be pretty... It's all going to come down to this last radical. pick. Yeah, we'll Galio. Oh, so picks. it's going to be Galio mid lane. T yeah, Twitch jungle, Swain top. Ooh. Very this spicy comp. Lots be... of damage. You know, coming out from the side of BGS and tanking us early from Swain and Galio and Alistair. Just such a... <coughs> such, I feel like they picked so many but strong champions. I, I mean, this is... This team can still flex really well, like, because you can put, I mean, I still think it's going to be a Twitch jungle, but you can put Galio or Swain top or mid, you can flex that, so based on, maybe based on the matchup that they're put in, they can swap those two around, so, because, you know, Menbung still has a pick available. Yeah, in some ways, those, see where that those picks are similar, though, and, you know, you see, they're both kind of tanky AP. You know, wave clearing types. Uh, I guess the difference is really Galio is able to roam more. Uh, so you kind of expect the Galio pick to be stronger, you know, sort of in the mid lane where he's able to, you know, move around, move between the two lanes and decide where he wants to use that ultimate. Uh, I assume we're going to see a Swain Galio. Swain uh, never move into a Galio ult at some point in this game, which is going to be pretty dirty. But, uh,. Ooh, a Karma picked up for UBI. Yep, so I, I was going to go into this because Lulu, Orn, and Scion, you just seems like you got to protect the Caitlyn comp, and then the fact that you're going to add a Karma on top of that, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a protect the Caitlyn comp. Let's do a lot of, have a lot of CC here. So it's going to be on Jabberman Kurtz to, you know, stay alive and pump out tons of damage, which over an Ezreal not hard to do early just because you can you can poke out an Ezreal pretty well yeah but over the twitch so. i think is going to be the point of contention i think i think it's a good comp though because if you if universe six is on the is on the aggressive you're gonna see scion and orn going in and karma using her uh ultimate to get everyone to run 
and follow that scion properly. All right, so. it looks like they are all ready to go into game. Let's see. So we are gonna head into game here. Here we are. Let me adjust my settings here <clears throat> as we go into. All right, I've had enough of the Wii, Wii menu music for one day. There you are. Seems you left your brave pants at okay, home. so what, what do you expect uh, from these team comps, Kobe? What are you thinking? Um, realistically, it just seems like BJS is wanting to get a good snowball going. Um, Twitch is going to want to be ganking these lanes, trying to get them ahead. An Ezreal and an Alistar in the bot lane, though, is going to be an interesting one. Like, Alistar is going to have to have some really good engages in order to get anything done. I just because with, you know, Lulu Shield, the Polymorph, um, just Caitlyn being able to trap up and uh, do the Caliber Net away, it's going to be a hard lane to get to uh, and to actually be able to get enough damage early with an Ezreal. But... If Twitch can somehow sneak in there, get kind of a flank on, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. But I think that's going to be a, a big point of contention is Twitch getting ahead. If Twitch can get ahead and then keep the lanes down, that would be great. Um, on the same token, you're just... Universe 6 is literally just trying to keep Caitlyn alive ahead. Uh, and let let the Caitlyn do that poke da all that poke damage. So BJS trying to get the picks off while UVI's got that or Universe Six has got that strong front line to protect the Caitlyn. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like um, I think both teams are relatively tanky in in the grand scheme of things when you're looking you're looking at it. So I think they're I think uh, Universe Six is going to have an easier time maybe executing their protect Caitlyn plan. Uh, with the shields from Karma, because I don't think uh, that they're bring BJS doesn't bring a lot of bursts to the field. I mean, the best burst that they have is going to be from the Twitch, and maybe the second activation of the Swain ultimate. So, um, unless they're able to get deep onto that Caitlyn, uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough. So, a lot of this game is going to hang on uh, how well Jabberman Curse is able to play that Caitlyn and dish out the damage that he needs, that uh, his team needs. Yeah, I mean, once Swain, get, if Swain can get any sort of lead, which I don't necessarily know how the Swain-Scion matchup goes, I would think Swain would be alright in lane, um, knowing that Scion typically goes the Comet, that can be annoying in lane, because you, the Scion can pump out quite a bit of damage, but... Um, I mean, that'll be interesting. Uh, they're definitely going to have to, you know, work their way around those fights. Because basically, Frontlash is going to want to get into the middle of the team, and then hopefully get a Galio ult on top. And then Alistar just to jump in there and CC a lot. Which at the moment, Detective Cone is on that Alistar. So... I wonder if they're doing some sort of weird thing or if they're just trolling. I, I bet can't tell. I bet it's just trolling, but sometimes you never know. Ah. There it is. The troll has been revealed. But then that's an Ezreal jungle. Ezreal jungle, it's been done before. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure what sort of spot Ezreal jungle's in right now. So I'm hoping that that's a troll and that Twitch jungle gets played. But you never know. We could see. We could see potentially the Ezreal jungle, which I think. In, in, all, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's it might be weaker uh, in some respects, so we'll see. It looks like <laughs> they're not switching. Let's no, see. yeah, it's gonna be the Ezreal jungle. It looks like so. I've seen it done. Uh, you kind of go a strange build with it because uh, you definitely build an Iceborn gauntlet most of the time. Obviously, I think with Ezreal, it's always situational whether you build like a Triforce or a. a gauntlet um but then i'm just wondering what kind of jungle item he decides to build if he decides to even complete the jungle item before going into anything else so 
Full AP I mean, I... Ezreal jungle. I'm calling <laughs> it now. You heard it here first. Yeah, we'll have to find out, I guess. Yeah. So, looks like, uh, I, I'm gonna guess that the Swain and Scion match up here. Uh, it's gonna be pretty even, mostly wave clear. Uh, I don't, I don't really expect too much action out of the top lane until, uh, six hits, and then you can see maybe some Scion combos, uh, pop off there in the, in the top lane. As a real Orin, honestly, uh, kind of lackluster, wouldn't you think? I think neither of these jungles really has the, uh, the oomph to power through and really have a, a huge effect on the early game. Yeah, neither one has a great necessarily gank potential. I think Ezreal would actually be a little bit better just because you have the the dash to get in and you'll have a little bit more CC. So if you can, like, in the mid lane combo it with, you know, a Galio knockup taunt, you could do a little bit more. Yeah. Karma I... having the shields might not be the best target. <clears throat> but you can try, you know, I mean, I think top would be good, because if you land, you know, Swain, any sort of Swain CC, you can pump down a lot of damage onto the Scion, maybe force a flash, come back and do it again. Uh, bot lane, I feel like with Lulu being there, it's a pretty safe lane overall. So, unless Ult Instinct Goku can land some really good, you know, Alistar combos, I think they'll play pretty... I think Universe Six will be pretty safe in the bot lane with that, though. But... I'd agree. I think I think uh, Ezreal's gonna have an easier time ganking for sure than the Orin. Uh, the Orin, the Orin, I think might require a little too much setup in terms of just straight up giving it to him. Giving it to him. I mean, the Scion doesn't yeah. have the the CC reliability necessarily unless he's able to hit the uh, screen with the Slayer. Uh, and I, I maybe you see it from the Karma with the W in the mid lane, but I feel like Galio is able to dash out. Um, and Caitlyn and Lulu, you more, just, more or less just want to farm up yeah. uh, and get laid on some poke and not really commit too hard. Uh, but if they're overextended, I can see Orin go super hard. Yeah, your Universe 6 is just looking to let the Caitlyn farm, get Caitlyn ahead, and then group up. Because then you have a massive front line with uh, Orin, Scion, you'll have Lulu shields, you'll have Karma shields. Karma will deal a bunch of damage as well, because, you know, obviously Karma will be going AP, but that means those shields will be huge, so if you have the Mantra shield, that'll be great. Mantra Q is good for fighting, and I mean, it, the Mantra Q is going to be great versus Ezreal and versus Twitch, because you hit one or the other of them as an AP Karma, that's like half health just from the first proc, let alone the second proc if that lands too. That's a lot of damage that can be go down. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, okay, there we are. <laughs> my my game just told me uh, team you're ass in the area of the shields. <laughs> yeah, the move speed to get Orn in there, Cyan in there. Not to mention Lulu shields as well, and Lulu ult to keep somebody alive. So it's going to be a tough one if Universe Six is able to get some sort of lead. It's going to be tough for. Uh, BJS to try and come back from behind in that case. Yeah, absolutely. And let's do some side-by-side uh, -side skin analysis here, the most important part of the game. Uh, we see Northern Front Swain for Front Lash, a very acceptable skin, but it's not Pirate Swain. Uh, so pr honestly, kind of lackluster. Uh, as well, also, I hope uh, we're going to wait 30 seconds on our game start time uh, so that we're able to accurately... Uh, begin the game at the same time and have no sort of delay so let's see there we are all right we'll wait our 30 seconds for delay here but yeah we see pretty standard summoners and uh nothing too surprising i think from uh in terms of the masteries i don't really see uh, anything panic op opting for the comet instead of anything uh, anything else kind of ridiculous uh, yeah it's pretty standard helps with the poke helps do a little bit of damage as well uh, I mean yeah not much more to it here we are I'm going to be at I'm a little slow on my timers here sorry about that 16 17 18 19 20 you have me all right. 23, 24, 25. We locked in. Yep. 
Okay, perfect. We go cheat. All right. So we'll follow the directed camera here, and away we go. I'll turn off our champion luck music too. Sorry about that, man. Mm, I love hearing this uh, extreme audio from Gert. Lots of slapping. It's great. Devonair Galio may be walking into a trap. Eh, not gonna step up too not far. Not too much. Yeah, not too much action. It looks like uh, no one's gonna try for it here. Nothing spicy. Top panic on top that funny. Front lash giving him the Slayer's roar. Let's see, front lash trade some autos. Uh, looks like front lash came a little bit ahead in that trade. And gonna send panic on the top hat back to the base, I would assume. Yeah, plenty of time still. Come oh, no. back before. No, neither one of them are basic. Neither one of them are basic, so it looks like Top Hat's just going to go to a slight disadvantage. Uh, both uh, junglers, again, starting with the same buffs, the uh, bottom side buffs for the strong leash. Uh, makes a lot of sense in this sort of a matchup here. Uh, Gurk getting that blue down, finally. Ezreal's just a little bit ahead, maybe getting some pressure, uh, some advantages early on. Uh, this might turn into a gank sometime in the top lane. And a dark harvest for the Ezreal. Alright. Let's see how it goes. That might be the spiciest thing that we missed. <laughs> dark harvest Ezreal. Dark harvest Ezreal. Ooh. Absolutely. We see the invade here from the Karma. Level Karma 1. Karma coming around. Gonna try and take the blue away. Oh, but the smite was it up. Let's get smited away though. Up. So, Karma's just kind of walking into the jungle, though. There's not... That's... They're giving up quite a bit of CS, to be honest. In the, in the so... Yeah, missing all the experience. Only down 4 CS at the moment, but it's down a level and probably a little bit more than a level, so... That was a very significant bet that uh, Detective Cone gave up Smite on Wolves or something. But, uh... <laughs> I think it, the ward was dying right as, as the blue buff was kind of going down. I think there should have just been more or less a guess, kind of like hoping for the best there. Uh, just because Menbung was kind of hoping that he didn't have Smite available, but he did, so it was a free secure. Uh oh, Jack Mancraft's getting stunned, and the Ignite going down and going down to the Alistar. Wow, what a play in the bottom lane. Panic of going down as well. Two Detective Cone to gank the top lane. Front Lash getting uh -oh. taken down by the dead Scion. What is this madness? Wow. Just plays so all over the map. <laughs> yeah, so in the bot lane, we saw uh, Olden Goku going really aggressive there. Flashing in on uh, Jabberman Kurtz. Knocking into tower, landed the ignite, so that way the heal didn't do as much damage. And then took a tower shot, so much damage came out there. Yeah, but just a little bit of a mis of misposition from Jabberman Kurtz, getting him a little too close to that Alistar, and the Alistar taking full advantage, you know, taking that flash and uh, getting the headbutt back into turret range. Just absolutely critical uh, plays from coming out. Panic on top that, getting gank. low once again, a Riki gank, stopping to throw the cube but taking a lot of damage from the Ezreal in Ooh. the meantime. Going pretty low, but getting, walking away pretty soon. Yeah, Memba. Front Lash took a lot of damage there too. But it looks like we're just going to see quite a few ganks in this top lane trying to keep Panic at the top hat down. Yeah, and keeping Front Lash ahead I think is a very important thing for this team. Well, this thing goes to go with the headbutt. Bit of the trade there. Coming out way ahead on that trade. Yeah, the tankiness of Alistar is really showing here. Medbun getting ganked Boot by Spook! Medbun going going to flash away, getting oh, getting Ooh. taken down by the expunge. What a roam there from Spook in the bot lane. Yeah, and you don't see that too many times from the ADC, but on Twitch, that's one of the champions that you really see the fans to take care of. Meanwhile, Front Lash, you can take it real low by Panic on the Top Hat, maybe getting some healing off of the Eye of, Eye of the em or Vision of Empire. The Slayer's Roar going down, Front Lash flashing away, and the channel coming out from Scion. It looks too close, but Front Lash limping away with what remains of his life. Wow. 
Yeah, that's a that goes to show you the the damage that Scion early can put out, uh, especially with you know going Comet and that Sorcery Mastery. So lots of damage early can out damage the the Swain. Uh oh, looks like Panic's been a little too greedy on this one. Detective Cone Essence Essence flexes in and just retreats to go get these minions, I guess. Yeah, Detective Cone out was out of mana at the time, which is not able to. Keep that going. Keep that trade going. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of minion damage. Too. I think the minion wave was just too much, and if you walked into a hidden queue from the scion, it would have just been curtains for Ezreal. So it was probably a good call, but uh, not aggressive enough for how Killer uh, Skins. But flying a headbutt in from Ulfins and Goku, and a lot of damage coming down out of Juice Miyashi. Spook flashing in, getting the expunge, and killing Juice Miyashi in lane. Yeah, things not going quite so well here for uh, for U6 here. Not quite going the right way. Hurts, taking a lot of damage in this screen. All this Goku is thinking about that. Yeah, not quite going the way. There's so much action. I'm, so, I'm sorry that I have to talk so much. But oh man, this game has just been packed. Gert coming in for a gank on front line. It looks like a huge ultimate coming down from Scion. And down goes front lash. Panic at the top hat. Taking him out with the auto. Yeah, and that's the CC chain that Scion can provide. Yeah. You got the wall on a no flash swing in the top lane into the knockup from the Orn. The ult from Scion. And then the Q knockup from. Uh, Scion as well, so just so much change CC all in a row to yeah. get the kill. Nice gank there, knowing that there was no flash from Front Lash. Front Lash as well. Swain's one of those champions that just has a really hard time in that long lane. Where Scion has some, you know, shields and things to keep him up and tanky, and uh, an ultimate to escape when it gets really rough. Swain just kind of lacks a lot of the mobility and. Uh, C reliable CC maybe to escape there from that long lane. Yeah, and in the mid lane, something that's surprising for me is, and I mean, I guess it, it comes down to, uh, you know, a death for Karma there in the mid lane and a little missed roam as well. But the Galio, it's a Bison, is up in CS by about 12 on, the, on Menbung on that Karma. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So doing well to stay ahead there as well. Uh, and you know, the, just the tanky Galio is going to come into huge effect later when really your only damage dealer uh, from U6 is Jabberman Kurtz on this Caitlyn. And I don't want to say Caitlyn's on... behind, but Caitlyn's he's behind. behind, yeah. There's a 2-0 Twitch on the opposite team. It's going to be super tough to kind of out damage that in the team. Fight. And look at that, another! Ultimate coming out from Spook in the bottom lane, just laying down some damage. He's trying to push them away from this. Bison flash away from the mid lane. Gert going in with the horn. Ooh. A lot of damage coming out. A really close yeah, fight, that... but limping away with their lives. He's a ass. That go Ezreal, super squishy. Super squishy, so if, you know, they're able to get a good advantage in. And Orn is able to put any sort of CC onto that Ezreal. That usually is going to equal just a dead Ezreal. I think that's U6's way back into this game uh, from where they're at. It's just kind of get in there with the CC and take out these squishy carries. Because, you know, Ezreal's got a lot of self heal, but Spooked is super vulnerable if you're able to actually catch him out. Yeah, lots of heal available. Looks like Detective Cone is here in the top Flash lane. Flash in from Alton to Goku! <laughs> into the, oh, but no action happens. Detective Cone was very close. Menbun has left the game. No pause coming out from either team. So I assume that is oh, a... Oh, it looks like he reconnected. Insta reconnect. No big, no problem there. But the uh, Infernal Drag going over to U6. Uh, very significant pickup for them when they're kind of in the after the game. Gemman Chris... Not really hitting Spooked with any abilities. Spooked just kind of wow. getting some free autos there. Lots of good trading going on for Spooked. Yeah, it looked like...
couldn't tell if he actually used the contaminate there or not. I thought he would have been able to get Juice Miyash in there, but it looks like they're trying to land a dive, but no flash from Alistar. Oh, the Ignite on the Juice Miyash and real close, but Gert's coming in just to give him a little bit Gert's of protection. He's got no health though. Yeah, it's really risky, but it looks like everyone's getting out. Gert flashes away. <laughs> And this time it's Universe 6 walking away from a poor fight. Yeah, a little overextension there from Ult Instant Goku trying to get the Ignite down onto Lulu. Shields set up though, and they're not able to get any kills there, but do force a flash out from Gert. You see Memug in this mid lane still a little bit behind, but really that lead hasn't grown at all, so I assume that's all from that one row. Uh, that we saw in Cake uh, early on. And just looks like uh, Memlux CS is pretty well keeping up with the uh, keeping up with that Galio. So, in terms of where the biggest CS advantages are, though, you're seeing it in the top lane on that Scion that's been playing real aggressively. And on Spook, who's going in on Jabberman Kurtz with the stealth, flashing up Whoa. forward, and the Expunge taking out Jabberman Kurtz. Oh, here comes the ultimate from Orn in the bottom lane. And it looks like Spook is getting away with the power of his stealth. Ooh, that very aggressive in the mid lane for Bison. Yeah, Juice Miyashin tried to flash in there in the bot lane to get there in time to shield, just was not able to, so Jabberman Kurtz does go down. Very aggressive play there from Spooked was able to get the kill so it did pay off it did and pay now off. already has that static shiv so there's gonna be some pop damage now Rolash getting real low the ultimate coming out from silent with the ultimate coming up from flash as well demonic form demonic hand visions of empire and getting just slightly away front last trying to take these last couple cs with the remainder of that ultimate Roar the Slayer coming out. Oh, oh no! <gasps> Disaster! Panic wow. at the top and slays Frontlash. But now he's getting ganked up by Bison and Defective, Detective Cone. It looks like he's getting away. And a teleport in there. It's gonna be cancelled. Not much happening there. That is one high DPS Scion. <laughs> up there. Do you see that? That damage is ridiculous into a Slayer. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the power of having uh, whatever that is, the meteor the comet uh, yeah it's comet that's one uh, <laughs> um just so much damage coming out base damage and there's not a whole lot of like swing does not have a whole lot of stats like early uh and just have a catalyst for a little bit of health and mana at this point and that's that's about it so Everything science to Goku. Just cut right through. What are you doing? <laughs> Looks like a little bit of a catch from uh, Team of Music taking advantage of Ultimate Team Goku being a little overextended on vision. Ultimate but I mean, look at how high. look at how long that took four people, four people to kill Ult Instinct Goku. Yeah, it seems like it, it was took pretty them that long. Panic at the top hatch, really giving it the front lash. Telling him, get out of my lane, you can't be up that far, what are you doing? Q, and goodbye, the Comet taking it away. Wow. Bison dodging out Ooh. from the uh, ram from Gert and giving them the taunt. Wow, Bison really dodging all these skills, but the Texas Cone maybe getting a little too low from Gert, diving a little deep for some kills. Let's go laying down some more auto attacks and Gert going down to Spook. Yeah, lots of trade damage coming in. If U6 is, is coming out pretty evenly in these fights, but BJS is just getting, their team is getting to these fights sooner, so they are having the man advantage here. They're just not like before U6 can get there, so. U6 could be winning these fights if they just rotate it a little bit quicker. Excuse me, Ash is getting really low under the tower there. Kayla Jackman Kurtz is getting the CC, but it's Juicy oh, Ash is come down. going down from the Ignite from Ult Instant Goku. Detective Cone getting low as well. Panic of the Tata coming in and slamming that axe down, getting him with the comment. Unstoppable Scion. Jetman Kurtz coming in with some more auto attacks. Oh my <laughs> goodness, Scion with the double, the triple kill. Getting oh everybody down low. Holy everybody cow! Everybody staying way too long in these fights from both teams. 
I mean, you could see Menbung and Juice Miyash in there earlier so low and decided to stay. And Lulu Shield got used, and the Ignite from Old Instinct Goku was able to pick up that kill. And then just over aggression there from BJS. Old Instinct Gosu and Bison stay just a little bit too long, and Panic Top Hat's able to come in with the Flash ult and get a, a triple kill. Seven and one Scion now. Seven and one Scion. That's insane. That was... That's their way back into this game at this point. Yeah, the seven the and one Scion. Scion combo. It looks like they've taken a head, actually, just getting that first tower in the top lane. And now they're going for two objectives at once. Scion trying to take the Rift Herald, as well as the rest of this team, grabbing this Earth Break. And there's not a lot that Yusuf is going to be able to do unless... Oh my goodness, they're running in. Janet Gert getting the ultimate down, but not being able to finish the second cast. Judas Miyashi getting taken out by Detective Cone. And Jack Mankert's trying to get away from this big swain, but there's not a lot that can be done. Front, front lash is just, <laughs> I hate to say it because he's so far behind in lane, but just a massive threat in these team fights. Yeah, I mean, when they don't have Sai on there, who was busy taking the Rift Herald at the time, did secure that. But when they don't have Scion, the 7-in-1 Scion, who's like un almost unkillable at this point, there's not much you can do. They made an extremely risky play there to try and, you know, kind of go over into that, uh, into that Earth Drag with, with two or three of them, and it really paid off, actually. Being able to pick that up for themselves is pretty huge uh, for the side of the DJS. Uh, gets, might be able to get them back into that game if they're able to convert that into some objectives here in the near term. Yeah, I think that first dragon, that first Infernal Dragon, was the key for U6. I think if they let BJS get that and they weren't able to get that themselves, it would have been this game would have been so much harder than it is already. Yeah, Just because you don't need to give them BJS any more damage than they already have. Yeah, especially so. not to any objective. Uh, Memba going a little hard on the, on the Bison, maybe getting punished for it. Frontlash coming out with the uh, Vision of Empire and the Death's Hand. And Memba trying to get some retaliation training going, but oh, the Neverwood catches it. Frontlash finishes off with the motto. Meanwhile, Gertz coming back into the fight with a couple of CC abilities from the Orc, getting Neverwood once again and going down to It's a Bison. Panic of Top Hat Ooh. coming with the unstoppable, giving them the axe, and good night, both of the players from the side of BJS. Just the Scion, whenever the Scion's able to come in, it's just completely unstoppable, just like the ultimate. Yeah, look at, just look at how massive Scion is already. Look how much health is there. Like, ooh, the oh, flash the coming flash in. Oh, the flash headbutt. Run. Getting rid of that uh, Rift Herald. Just... Really well played from Ultimate to Goku, be able to get out of that as well. Uh, stopping maybe this mid turret from getting quite as much damage onto it. Uh, All four coming in. I don't think they're still going to be able to take this power though. No, it looks like maybe not, but they might Ooh. be looking for a dive on the tech to Getting really low there. Uh, the turret, it looks like they're staying for the turret. Panic in the top hat. Doing a lot of tanking with all, all that gold. Uh, and it looks like U6 is walking away safely. Yeah, I mean, this was the key for U6. Just group up, and you have that beefy frontline with the shields from both Lulu and Karma. Like, the Scion or the Orange shouldn't take much damage, in all honesty. They should be able to stay relatively alive just because you have those shields. And it was on top of all thinkiness. Definitely a well executed teleport from my bot, knowing just to teleport to that minion and create that advantage for his team. Uh, keep them uh, keep them ahead while this Baron spawns in uh, about 15 seconds here. We're coming up on. So that'll be the next big objective. And you can see BJS is already looking to get vision of that Baron pin. Yeah, and, and I really want to say put the Scion back in the bot lane because the Scion's the only one that can do any sort of split pushing. But if Scion's not there, they're going to lose the fights. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. Spook with a bit of a premature ulti trying to damage up Headbutt. Well, this is Goku going for the Headbutt to get Gert away from his team. Taking a lot of damage in the turn. Wow. Yeah, Karma's starting to ramp up a little bit. 
still really doesn't have any items, has a tier of the goddess and a lost chapter, so not much ability power coming out yet. Does have the sword shoes, but I think once uh, you kind of get any items going, then it'll be, uh, those fights will help out a lot more. Karma damage will actually be a somewhat meaningful. Yep. We should see a little bit more, maybe, of the mantra uh, of Karma coming into play as she's scaling. It looks like the, going for the scaling build this game uh, with that tier might be a way to get some more damage on this team. Uh, yeah, Jabberman Kurt's fallen behind in farm by almost 50 farm now. I think they need to make, they need to find a way to get Jabberman Kurt some, some more farm, some more time in a lane, because uh, they're relying very heavily on that Caitlyn at this point to be that damage dealer. Yes, you have a beefy Scion who's actually doing quite a bit of damage, but as the game goes on, that's going to mean less and less the damage there, because. We'll have swing. Heading up combat flashing in now. It's a bison, it's a bison just going instantly down to the entire team of U6. What the heck? That was. Yeah, a little sneak attack there. A long <laughs> planned bush cheese uh, from Fnatic. I mean, U6. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they can get something out of it, this is that'll be great, but if not, then. Snoop coming in with the ultimate, doing a lot of damage to Juice Miyashi. Juice Miyashi going down, Jack and Kurtz can ult it away. Smooth flashing forward dodge, Kurtz. Uh, a little thing there. And Jack and Kurtz getting destroyed by Twitch. Ooh, the ramp yep. from Kurt, I mean. Apologize. Interesting good. choice. Kinda got a top hat running forward, just trying to get some CC down on Ultimate Goku, but Smooth is there. In the, in the back, <laughs> headbutt away, <laughs> panic on top, Spook, we don't want you doing damage, panic, get out of here. So panic, goodness, goodbye, it looks like they, a safe escape from a risky situation. Yeah, well, definitely. Like BGS trying to burn on that turret, they do. 6 and one Twitch gets any sort of time to, you know, auto-attack this Caitlyn, and she's gonna die. Caitlyn or... Lulu, for that matter, uh, does have a static shiv, boots, and opted to go with a BF sword, surprisingly. Yeah, I think uh, the, the Bloodthirst is definitely interesting. You know, you usually expect to see the Infinity Edge there, but um, maybe the Greater Sustained fights is more worth it against these large tanks that he's having to deal with. Uh, I think, I think it's definitely being used for at this point, because as we can see, Spooped is being very... Uh, just diving into the back line kind of solo by himself so more or less got that I think to make sure in these solo fights is sustaining more than a Caitlyn's going to or is sustaining more than you know a Karma is going to is able to burst through them uh, and stay alive. Uh, Jetman Kurt's getting destroyed by Spook. Spook three autos he's gone. Meanwhile the heroic uh, dive coming in from its bison and taking down uh, Spook oh, running around. Oh, Zion. getting ultimated by the Scion. Scion taking down Twitch. And out comes the ultimate front lash, trying to make up for the lost damage. Looks like they're chasing after Juice Miyashi, but these other two tanks are going to be tough to deal with. They're going down. Juice Miyashi going down. And last but not least is the 9 in 1 big Scion under tower. Got to be tough to deal with that. Not a lot of damage happening. Yeah, Panic at the top hat's not going to be able to stay there any longer. Going to have to give up the tower. Huge wave there. Steps up too far and it's just going to die. Like, even though you're a 9 to one tanky side with three full items, not much you can do. I think the problem is that it's a it's a Scion, you know? If it were 9 and one on Jab Mank Hurts, this is a different story. There's a lot of damage coming out and burst and things that can happen there. But 9 and one Scion, just, it's just tanky and there. A lot of the time. Yeah, meanwhile in the bot lane though, they did get most of that tower. I don't know if they're actually going to get the tower. Minions do end up taking down the tower. Uh, Panic at the top hat did use the banner minion previously in the bot lane. Got a huge wave pushing. Ooh, just missed all of BJS there. I just want to point out before we move on that uh, 
big anime titties made a blood pact on not to use Scion for this, and Earth nailed us, so... Yeah. Fuck that guy. And he's doing it, doing a terrible job. <laughs> but as we can see, they're doing Death Bush again. It's the best plan. Yeah, it looks like they're just gonna go and do it. Screw that, we're gonna pull the trigger, and they get immediately spotted up by the Swain Vision Vampire. Ooh. And this is really risky with the Tech Shot in there. And surprising getting the four man taunt! Absolutely massive! Shark getting the ultimate off and Spooks trying to take him out in the front line. The ultimate coming down from Galio to protect Spook. And down goes half the team. And Ooh. now Kalen gets going down. And 9 and 10 and 1 Scion trying to limp away from this one. But Ultimate Sengoku just gonna let him do it. Yeah, J I mean, Jabberman Kurtz was able to stay alive for quite a bit in the fight, despite Lulu from going down instantly. Just died so quick, I wasn't even able to get uh, the wild growth off in that fight. Ooh, coming around, getting three autos, four autos out of the fifth one. Wowzers. Yeah, Jabberman Kurtz is gonna be really playing the Switch well. I mean, Spooked has had very little you know, pressure against him. Was able, I mean, was able to do a lot of work early because Ult Instinct Goku was able to make a couple plays early, put Caitlyn behind, put the Lulu behind, got a kill or two on, on the Twitch, and twi even Twitch roamed mid was able to pick up a kill. So making great plays to stay ahead and there's been just no back pressure I mean, you've had this Orn that's been trying to dive onto the Twitch, but it means nothing. Twitch just one v can even one v one the Orn, and there's nothing. There's nothing Orn that can, can be do done. About it. Yeah, really. And another item picked up for Twitch is going to Blade of the Rune King, getting some more tank shred uh, for that big team that he's facing. Maybe yeah, also to... definitely helps Kite too. Yeah, kite to fight. Being able to take, take out Panic at the top is definitely a critical piece of this too. Yeah, that rat is uh, a little stinky. On the side of the Orn getting a little bit front lashing. Uh, Ultimate Sengoku getting a lot of speed, but Orn flashes away and gets away. Yeah, they see that there's. They can see that Spooped is in the bot lane right now. That might not have been a bad fight for them to take, is that. 4v5 without the twitch damage it's it doesn't quite hit the same but they still have an adc okay look at the ezreal ezreal already has a drive force ezreal is 3 1 and 7 and has been doing well but just not the same shred that this not, not even close yeah. just not the same twitch has the spray and pray over the whole team can you know crush four people down at once ezreal not quite so much the ultimate coming out from Gurren, looks like they're looking for an engage onto uh, the side of EJS. Gurren getting the E down, but going down straight away to Spooked on the side there. Uh, Orin looking to try and take them out in the back line, but taking, not doing a lot on his back line here. Yeah, Scion is just, was just being ignored there. They were chasing after the back line. I can't really, the directed camera is only taking me so far in this place, but it looks like for that little blunder, BJS is going to take tier 2 tower. <laughs> Stoop getting under tower range deals some more damage. This is really, oh, Metmunk, uh-oh, Metmunk flash slurp, protect the code, just Bye. barely gets away. And down goes the inhibitor turret. Heading to top that, running forward, landing the E on him. Uh oh, here comes the unstoppable force! From Katic on top hat, Ultimate Sengoku going down. Uh, Ooh, the and flash from Frontlash. Chase is on. Kurt running in, and Frontlash goes down as well to Jabberman Kurt's assault. Swoop going in on the back line, oh. taking out Lulu, taking out Jabberman Kurt's, getting ulted by Galio, CCing everyone in there. Kurt goes down as well. What is that damage? Spook is doing so much work this game. 
Yeah, spooped. Was able to take out Lulu right away. Eventually able to take out uh, Gert and the Caitlyn as well, but not able to one v four there. It's a just not quite enough. Able to flash away from her. What a what a long and awkward team fight that was. <laughs> All right, and then you see that the banner minion was placed in the mid lane, should be able to be cleared out by the Ezreal decently well. Looks like they're gonna try and secure a dragon off this, but they don't have a jungler at this point. Uh, and it looks like VJS is heading in the direction of the dragon. Yeah, they got U6 spotted out. U6 is not out, taking this so... quick at all. Yeah, it looks, it looks like U6 might have to back away since the Ezreal is just able to steal if they want to. But uh, it looks like they're persevering through the uh, adversity. And, uh, Waiting for the Orn to get there, but Caitlyn is in the top lane right now. So you're missing a lot of damage there. I think we're looking at a dragon for the side of BGS, or maybe a three man <laughs> headbutt pulverizing from Alton to Goku, doing quite a bit of work there. Gert going in with the ultimate, Alton whiffing everybody on BJS. BJS laying down the CC, Spook getting the damage down on the Gert, and Panic on the top hat going down as well. Coming into the Undying form, but getting CC'd and killed by the back line of BJS. And BJS coming out way ahead in that fight. Yeah, and you can see that Bloodthirster is just taking no damage. Like, you've got a Bloodthirster and a Bork. And you've got a mortal reminder to cut through, you know, any sort of armor that they may have at all. So there's, you know, no healing available. It, this this Twitch is doing a lot of damage. I would still like to see a uh, an infinity edge here, because then that would just mean so much more pop. But doing a really good job here so far, sustaining through, being able to damage the, the entire team. Yeah, and as it stands, it looks like the survivability that he opted into has just been paying off in dividends as he starts the 1v1, you know, Caitlyn and Ord and pretty much everyone except for the Scion so far uh, that we've seen, so. Oh yeah, not just 1v1, it can 1v4. Yeah, absolutely. Not quite 1v5, still has one more item, but almost there. I'm still <laughs> crossing my fingers for the Infinity Egg, but it looks like a bag has been picked up, so. Uh, it might be a second, uh, it might be a Renaud's Hurricane, potentially. Uh, that, I mean, if you're trying to 1v4, being yeah. able to hit multiple people all at once is you, you pretty good as, You may as well hit three of them with all your, all your damage you've done, so. Just for when you don't have your ult available. Ooh, yeah, looks like he's trying to get a flank off here. Onto the Ooh, it's going in the mid lane. Option. Going down! Chaperman Curse oh getting low as well. But not being able to take it down as the top tower goes down to the other four members of BJS. Spooks is just on fire this game. Yeah, I mean, Juice Me Ashen has just been able to do nothing this game. Just not been able to do anything. And, you know, Lulu's a great champion. You know, for Juice, this kind Juice of Me Ashen is just not able to step up with the carry even to the middle lane. Because of how strong the stealth is on Spook. And just look how fast the Baron is. It's yeah, gone. Absolutely it's it's melted. I mean, t double 80 carry. Pretty tough to deal with. But let alone if one of those 80 carries is 15 and 2. Uh, some quick backs and some quick items. So the Runa Hurricane picked up the Spook. Uh, and a couple more control orders picked up before. All things to go. Yeah, I'm kind of interested here. There's no thorn mails coming out. Now, I mean, it looks like Panic at the Top Hot might be building one now, but with the fact that there's an Ezreal who is AD, and the Ezreal did decide to go the Dust Blade route, I've seen that, and it, it seems to be decently well. Um, but then you've got a Twitch that's, you know, 15 and 2. It might be a good investment to go and get that. Oh, oh man, Spook is coming up stealth again. Jet Meckert's getting low. Spook flashing forward, taking out oh, both oh, oh. Juice Miyashi and Jet Meckert. Yeah, this might be the final push here. Yeah, it looks like no. U6 I mean, might maybe wanna... not. They're not in the. They're not all grouped together there. But Spook I don't think that matters. Spook is 
getting a little bit of damage out of the panic at the top half. Much, man, much of BGS is kind of just hanging out of that bottom lane, getting that pressure going. I mean, they've got the Baron minion, so they're set to go. Another turret destroyed. Looks like it's gonna be a clean roll for uh, the side of BGS after kind of a. Uh, an interesting back and forth in the mid game there. Uh, Spook is doing a little bit of damage to that turret, but kind of top half being able to zone him off. So we'll see. This is the last. Be the final fight here. This is the last hope for you, Six. Hey, I'm talking about getting one by Horde. None, bro. I need to put that one, <laughs> one on the board. But here comes the damage. Front Lash getting in there with the demonic form. Spook getting in here with the ultimate. Taking out home. Three members of the team. Ult is a go going into the base. He doesn't care. He just wants them all dead and spoof. And the rest of BJS taking the Nexus. Yeah. What a dominant game from Spoof. Yeah, I don't think there was any doubt that Spoof won making things happen that game. I mean... I, I give a ton of credit to Ult Instinct Goku there. Made a bunch of plays early um, to and definitely was able to get that Twitch ahead. Just took advantage of a couple mispositionings there from Jabberman Kurtz. Um, knocked him under tower, got a kill over to Twitch, and then you know Spoof made a roam up to mid lane, got another kill, and it just kept steamrolling from there. And then it was just... You know, once they, they got to the Twitch to that point, then it was just spooked. Going invisible, running through lanes, just killing. It was Juice Miyashin and Jabberman Kurt stood no chance. Let's take no a look at the at damage all. graph really quick in, in uh, post champ select. Let me bring that up for the uh, the stream here. All right, so here we are, and then the damage graph. It looks like Spoof was able to double the damage almost of every other character in the game, except for that Scion uh, in the top lane. I gotta say, my, my Tilt Proof honor goes to Front Lash, and my GG honor goes to Spooked. Yeah, that was... I mean, once Twitch got hit, it was very... There was a, there was a couple good fights that U6 was putting up there uh, in the mid-game, but I just don't think that they played their comp kind of like they needed to. I think they needed to put more priority into the bot lane, try and shut down the Twitch, get the Caitlyn head, and I think they kind of did the opposite. They more or less, they, you know, Gert went top lane several times, and yes, at one point, you know, you had you had that 7-1 and one Scion early. Yeah, which looked completely but... unstoppable for a little bit there, coming in those mid-game fights, but then Twitch was able to take out exactly... Who we needed to. Yeah, I think I think it might be safe to say. I don't know how to put in the MVP vote, but I think game one MVP has to go to Spooked for just single, I mean, almost single-handedly taking out the opposing bot lane from the game. Uh, it was just absolutely bonkers in that late game damage. So uh, we will take a break here for VOD purposes, and then we'll get back to you with game number two.